Hello friends, old Dick Blackshack here, and uh, this time I am uh, making a video here to demonstrate some of the new networking features in this release of Big Pimu. So last release I introduced Jaglink support, which uh, is another video on that if you're not familiar. This release introduces what I call state sync, which is the usual emulator approach of um, basically making sure each uh, peer has the state synchronized and then feeding uh, inputs from there. Uh, this emulator has no functionality to track save states or rewind or anything like that, so it's pretty uh, a pretty basic, um, straightforward implementation. You'll notice that uh, when you go to state sync mode, you have these two additional options here. And this is basically a predictive latency window and so uh, 5 frames, you know, 16.6 .6 milliseconds times 5 is a pretty significant delay, but um, if you have like ping times in the area of um, less than 80 milliseconds or so, this should be a pretty uh, decent default for you. And uh, obviously, um, if you, you're having a pretty unpredictable connectivity, uh, you're having a lot of packet loss or random uh, spikes in latency. Um, then you can expect to see that the emulator hitch a lot in this mode. But um, if that's happening, if the emulator is hitching a lot, you can increase this number. And that will, of course, increase the constant rate of latency, but it may also prevent, um, you know, those occasional hitches. And when there is a hitch, the emulator basically treats it like um, a dropped frame. So you might notice some audio stuttering and stuff like that if you do get into that territory where you're starting to miss frames, um, which can be unpleasant. But you know wh whether you want to uh, increase this number or not is kind of up to you, your preference. And um, you know for for something like a local area network where your pings are super uh, minimal something like, you know, I've got usually something below five milliseconds on my network here. You can lower this all the way to the minimum and you should be fine. So if you are planning to play over a local area network or something, keep that in mind. This is kind of a default that should also work for, you know, most broadband connections as well. Uh, I say most, but maybe not here in America, you know. <laughs> and uh, the other option here is um, to remap your input index, basically. So the default of zero means that uh, each client is uh, mapped to an input device according to its client index. So th this is a pretty good default for most games. You, you can join and you'll automatically be player two um, if you're the second client joining a host. Um, but you can also, if you want to have re over overlapping controls, for example, you could have uh, this client remap to input device one and then both the host and this client will be controlling device one and it handles uh, overlapping inputs and uh, conflicting inputs from the same controller and such, um, I, I guess fairly intuitively. Um, and this, this could be a fun option if, for example, you have a one player game, but you and your friend decide, oh, well, we're each gonna co control different components of this game, or like maybe it's a uh, turn-based type thing um, something like a JRPG might be useful, although nothing like that comes to mind for the, for the Jaguar, there, there's probably something, but anyway, <laughs> um, so there's that, and then you have this new script mode, which I'll get to in a second, and script mode is basically, um, completely letting script code, um, drive, um, the networking interface, um, basically. And uh, so, if you uh, if you don't have the same network device set, and you're trying to connect to a different instance of Big PMU without that network device set, it'll kick you off and tell you that's the case. So you don't really have to worry about oh well, I don't do do I have to coordinate which device to use with whoever I'm connecting? I mean, sure, it's a good idea to be like oh yeah, I'm gonna play this game, but <laughs> you know it's it's not strictly mandatory, and so. Uh, Let's see here. Let's do a little demonstration here of Kasumi Ninja. And I'm going to go ahead and start it up here. And 
disconnect from my laptop. up an instance over here. <laughs> okay. All right. It helps to actually, if you're hosting, create the server. <laughs> see that you know we've got a set of ping times here it's introduced in this version and when it says not ready there that means that client does not have the same ROM loaded um, even if they do have a software image of some sort loaded uh, it's not the one that you can host until it says ready there so and then you can see Kasumi Ninja is now loaded Two player mode here. Player one, select your fighter. Senzo. Player two, select right. your fighter. And I'm going to this on my laptop over here. <laughs> select the combat zone. Here. Entering oh, the combat right. zone. Round one. And, uh, I mean, obviously, it's hard to gauge the actual latency or anything just by watching it here, but, uh, you know, it's pretty, feels pretty good, I guess. <laughs> and of course, you know, no hiccups or anything, everything's going nice and smoothly. And if we decide to disconnect over here, so yeah, lost the connection, but of course, you know, it continues running just fine. And uh, other clients can drop in and out um, without interruption. If you are over an internet connection, um, when somebody first connects, it'll go ahead and send an emulator save state to them, and that can be fairly sizable. So if you if you um, have any delays there, you'll notice uh, like a little thing in the upper left. It'll tell you the progress transferring the save state. And it can take a little bit sometimes if your connection is slow, but other than that, it should be pretty straightforward, pretty smooth. And, uh, so... Now let's demonstrate this script mode, and specifically for the script mode. Um, so this is designed to basically let... Uh, anybody who wants to write their own network code for a Jaguar game. And to demonstrate it, I have um, basically written multiplayer into Alien vs. Predator. <laughs> Which may sound insane, and it is a little bit. But, um, so of course, as most of you probably know, Alien vs. Predator for the Atari Jaguar did not have any kind of multiplayer. Um, wasn't designed around it, wasn't intended to. And so this scripts, um, I can go over it a little bit. Uh, there, there is a lot to it, you know, it's a lot longer, a bit more complicated than uh, most of the other scripts, even the ones that do graphics enhancements or the uh, Jaguar VR script. Um, but basically what it's doing is it's hooking into AVP at various points, um, figuring out like all the game states that's relevant to synchronize to other clients, and it's sending all that stuff over the network or receiving it in the case of me and the clients. And it's um, dealing with a whole bunch of different, um, you know, non multiplayer compatible concepts like leaving items around when one player picks them up. Um, let's see here. To, you know, um, enemies actually switching off and attacking more than just the main player, which is handled in quite an interesting way here. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you want to take a look through the script yourself, um, it's actually doing the... Uh, so in order to handle the enemy thing, it's basically like switching control of different enemies to 
uh, different clients. And so temporarily the client will start feeding the server information about this enemy and it'll start simulating the enemy locally. And then, you know, if it gets switched to a different client, um, same thing happens and the server is relaying this to all the other clients. So they're all seeing the same thing and somehow it works. <laughs> I, you know, I gotta say when I, um, implemented all this stuff, I was, you know, not sure how much of a terrible maze I was getting myself into um, implementing multiplayer in this game, but it turned out to be not nearly as bad as it could have been. Pr pretty complicated, but not nearly as bad as it could be. And so, like, you've got these new, uh, with this release, you can get um, script callbacks for network updates and network re data receiving um, callbacks as well. And these are the two main socket functions you'll be dealing with, these netsend ones. Uh, this is basically just netsend, but automatically breaks things into elements for you. And behind the scenes, so you can just, you know, throw a ton of data at these functions. And behind the scenes, what it'll do is it'll use this ID that you give it to map it to an automatic uh, state delta management system. And so once it sends that giant initial snapshot, which, by the way, can be pretty sizable for Alien vs. Predator. I'm not actually um, trying to be efficient at all or, like, calling out unused entries in uh, the AMP data. can't remember what that stands for. Alien motion something, maybe. Um, but this is all based kind of on a source code that I managed to find for Alien vs. Predator, but it's, like, um, the code that's out there is not entirely reliable and it's missing pieces, so... Uh, it was of somewhat limited utility, but still a pretty useful reference for actually figuring out what a lot of this data is and what have you. Um, but anyway, so it'll just, it'll send a giant chunk of state data initially. And again, if you're on a slow connection, that can take a while. So if you're a client connecting to a server, um, you may, you may have something like, I don't know, 16 to 32 kilobytes of initial state data that's just going to shove down your throat initially. And... Most connections that'll download in the blink of an eye these days, but some connections are still terrible. And uh, once that's done, it'll just be sending the deltas over the network from there on. So that's usually very, very minimal subset of information. Sometimes it can even be close to zero if no objects are changing, nobody's moving around. Um, but anyway, so these, these script functions do all that stuff behind the scenes. And for AV, AVP here, we're basically synchronizing this custom game state structure that I've created. Uh, and then straight up just syncing all that AMP data, which is basically the game object data and some other um, map related stuff that can change um, at runtime. And so, uh, let's see here. Having gone through all that, um, this script supports up to 32 clients. I have not <laughs> even nearly attempted to do that many, but uh, same thing is like the Doom, uh, sorry, the Doom script, um, or sorry, the uh, the Doom batch file that I demonstrated in my last, last video. You can do a, kind of a split screen setup for this if you want to. I've got separate configurations prepared here, and uh, all these other command line options I discussed in the other video, if you care to um, delve more into that. But, that said, let's do a quick little demonstration of uh, AVP split screen here. And unlike the Jaglink stuff, this should work quite swimmingly um, over a network or whatever. And so the, the left screen here, the left client is the host, the right client is um, the yeah the the right instance is the the client and uh, so you can see here what on earth got a hold of this guy and you can uh, mix and match so you can you know be the predator or the alien and load into a human host instance and it will uh, basically when you connect it will go ahead and try to load you into the uh, same level as the host and when it does that, uh, it's basically just trusting the client to provide all of their um, inventory information and health and everything. So it it would definitely not be that hard to cheat <laughs> if you really wanted to. But uh, 
So what you can do also is you can load your own save game or even load a state while you're connected to the hosts. That will, you know, um, decide your character and inventory and everything. And then it'll still load you over to the host map and synchronize everything. So it's pretty flexible that way. Um, shouldn't break anything if a client decides to load a state and, you know, totally change their character and inventory. It should just handle that uh, on the host. And you can uh, murder each other. <laughs> Uh, I don't think all, I haven't tested all the weapons to make sure that's all, you know, working properly. This is again very loose, um, and this game is not meant to have multiplayer, so you're probably going to encounter bugs. But, uh, just to demonstrate some enemy stuff here, so let's run away. And, uh, oh, see if we can. Go ahead and train by. Oh, yeah, we got train by the host there. <laughs> so as you can see, they uh, they do uh, indeed attack other players and such correctly. And if you are the alien or the predator, the game doesn't actually. You'll notice uh, you know, I'm turning around and you're seeing the angle reflected uh, on the other side. The alien and predator don't even have frames for that, so yeah, <laughs> other players will just look like they're looking at you constantly if you do that. But you know, that's the way it goes. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I haven't done a great deal of testing with this. I played a little bit into the game. Um, and sometimes you get a lot, some interesting stuff like this guy. <laughs> Come here. Come here, you. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. That was angry at me. <laughs> it's doing a little bit of moonwalking trying to get the host player over there so sometimes it's a little wonky about uh, switching over but usually worst case you shoot them and they'll, they'll get you know re uh, retarget somebody nearby of interest or whatever and uh, again the way that works in the in the script is pretty uh, hilarious if you <laughs> if you're familiar with the, the kind of concepts you might normally be using in something like this but uh so yeah, that about covers it. And for this this uh, script network mode, you don't really have to worry about any additional options or anything like that. And uh, as far as the actual script goes, um, you know, be, if you are uh, technically inclined, please do feel free to review it because I would love to see other people implementing you know multiplayer and games that jaguar games that never uh, actually had multiplayer it's uh you know it's a fun thing <laughs> it makes me happy to do and see and so um yeah please do if you're a programmer or and or a jaguar developer of you know any kind please do take a look at the script and consider what you might be able to uh, leverage these systems for yourself so uh, until next time, please enjoy and uh, let me know if you get any, you know, huge network sessions of Alien vs. Predator going or anything. <laughs> I'm sure it will, everything will break horribly, but um, I have done some actual internet tests and it's been pretty resilient, like uh, connected to my neighbor's uh, Wi-Fi over there. Um, and they have just a terrible internet connection, you know, fluctuating between 60 and 400 millisecond ping times. Uh, really bad packet loss, and it still holds up pretty decently. Um, takes a little while to get that initial snapshot, but after that, everything's pretty smooth. So hopefully that will be the experience reflected for many of you, even with terrible internet connections. So uh, yeah, see you later.